the stadium seats roar, the sideline looking at the field in anticipation, coaches rush through their playbook, the players huddle on the field, the game is on the line, one more pass, one more rush, one more yard, could change everything. But in the midst of it all, a still silence falls over the arena, and all eyes turn to one spot. Every year, over a million athletes suffer from severe injuries, ranging from brain injuries to knee and bone injuries. 45% of athletes suffer from a serious injury within their athletic career. 10% of those injured athletes acquire injuries that put them out of play for three months or more. One sixth of athletes with concussions suffer from two or more concussions. 300,000 injuries per year are concussion related, with a 19% chance of concussion per year for active athletes. Some of the most injury related sports are baseball, soccer, and football. Football taking up more than a quarter of all sports injuries. Having a concussion is kind of like dropping your cell phone in the water. The water does not physically break the phone. Right? The case doesn't crack, the screen isn't broken, but the water disrupts the circuits and the manner in which the phone allows itself to operate to do the things that we like to do. This is kind of similar to what happens to the brain where the vast complex interconnections of neurons or our brain cells can become abnormal in a sense that they don't function appropriately. So it's not any particular one area of the brain, but more the complexity of the interconnection of different parts of the brain. My concussion affected me physically. My head shook a lot. It looked like I had almost looked like I had Parkinson's disease, which, which some of my friends made jokes about, which I thought were funny, but sort of made me a little bit sad. But um, after a while, the shaking stopped. About a month after my concussion, around mid-October, I got my concussion September 12th. Our, our first our, our opening game against Washington Township. But um, after the shaking stopped, I got my confidence back a little bit because people started treating me a little bit differently because when I when my shaking happened, people were sort of sort of afraid to talk to me about my concussion. Like they sort of treated me differently, like they were sorry for me, which I didn't really like because I don't like feeling sorry for myself because everything happens for a reason. I, I think my concussion happened for a reason. One of the things that's most challenging when dealing with the, the particularly acute setting of concussion is a lot of the symptoms are very vague and can often be mistaken for other problems such as a common cold. We're talking about headache, nausea, dizziness, feeling foggy. I've even heard sim uh, patients describe those symptoms as something that you could experience with seasonal allergies. So when I see a patient in the office, generally we're talking about these types of symptoms in conjunction with a known hit to the head. And when we have that history of a hit to the head, now we're seeing these symptoms, then we're more concerned about a concussion. The challenge with concussion is it's an injury to your brain, and the brain is obviously one of the most important things in your body. You can't live without your brain. So um, you wanna be aware that even though all of the short-term symptoms can and often do recover, or athletes can and do recover from the short-term symptoms, um, there can be long-term consequences. And the research currently right now shows that there may be some association with things like uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which again, you see a lot with um, uh, research with the NFL players and other professional athletes. Um, there can also be long-term memory deficits. And this is not a 100% associated thing. A lot of times it's more related to increased risk that some individuals can develop these symptoms over time independent of a concussion. Unfortunately, concussion might increase that risk. Well, untreated brain injuries are sometimes some of the things that keep me up at night. And then I spend a lot of time talking to my patients and their parents about this. Um, our brain is by far the most important organ on our body because it, the rest of the organs and, and we as people do not exist without our brains. So it needs to be protected as such. 
And so one of the things that I absolutely emphasize to the nth degree with every patient that comes in front of me is that safety needs to be the absolute priority. It has to come first. So any individual that starts to have symptoms of a concussion after getting to the, a hit in the head needs to recognize these symptoms and remove themselves from play. Because even though the risk is very low, there is the theoretical risk for potential serious catastrophic injury, including death. And that's something that absolutely needs to be remembered and cannot be ignored. Other times there is absolutely concern for long-term neurological deficit and other problems. And this is why when an athlete is identified as potentially having a concussion, they need to be removed from play. So the most common injuries that we, you know, that we treat here at the training room um, we work strict, like not strictly, but probably 80% athletes. Um, and then our adult population is, is fairly active. Um, so we, we treat a lot of knee injuries, shoulder injuries and elbow injuries. For the knee, we see a lot of ACL injuries, especially in, um, in girls, high school girls. And then as far as elbow and shoulder, that comes, you know, with baseball and a lot of a lot of kids now are specializing in one sport, which leads, especially in baseball, overuse, um, overuse injuries in the shoulder and the elbow. So a developing athlete means that the bones are growing, the muscles getting bigger. But during that period of time, as long as you progress your strengthening program and your exercise program in a gradual increasing manner, you will not increase your risk of injury because of your age. The biggest thing is the growth plates on the ends of the bones. As a growing athlete gets taller, those growth plates are very active and if you overload them with too much weight, for example, in the weight room, you could hurt yourself. So with the proper training, it's okay to work out. Um, I think improper technique usually leads to injury, whether or not it's a traumatic injury or it's an overuse injury. If you're constantly moving in the incorrect uh, manner, your, you know, your, your body's gonna start breaking down and, and that's what we see a lot um, in physical therapy with. Um, also, if you, you know, it, moving incorrectly can lead to a traumatic injury as well. As you see most of the time with ACL injuries, teaching somebody to move correctly is, uh, I think it's paramount in preventing injury. We have no good prevention for an ACL tear. No braces will protect them. But we're learning more about the training that goes into protecting the knee joint. And that involves more than just exercising the knee, but it involves exercising the core strength, which has been neglected, balance, technique, strength around the knee joint will help diminish the ACL injuries. And we're still doing studies. In fact, here at the Rothman Institute, we're doing big studies right now on understanding prevention or diminishing the results of a catastrophic knee injury. Equipment already is evolving. And the challenge with equipment is, to date, there is no equipment that has been proven to reliably reduce the risk of concussion. And you have to remember that concussion is, is a brain inside the skull phenomenon. I often explain to parents and, and, their, and my patients that you could wrap your head in Kevlar, bubble wrap, and then encase it in concrete. And you can get hit in the chest or body hard enough to transmit the forces, transmit the forces to the brain that can result in a concussion. And that's definitely something that parents don't necessarily want to hear because every good parent wants to protect their child in any way that they can. So when I say that equipment is evolving, what, one of the things that's happening is improvement in detection of impacts that could potentially lead to concussion. So a lot of new football helmets have sensors in them that can detect uh, increases in velocity and acceleration. And there's some theory and evidence that there may be some ability to translate that information into making developments that could potentially 
down the line increase um, our ability to detect and decrease the risk. Unfortunately, right now, the science isn't quite there yet. The injured squad. You'll see our team walking down the hill, see the whole entire team walking, and behind we see about 10 to 15 injured kids, which um, you don't really see with many teams. You see maybe three or four kids with that team that are injured walking down the team, not wearing any pads, just wearing their jerseys. But our injured squad, it's a group of characters, you know. Um, we got a bunch of kids with concussions, a couple kids tore their ACL, a couple kids have injuries in their knees, ankles, broken arms, broken fingers. It's just, it's a lot of kids, walking wounded we call them. It's, it's an awesome feeling knowing you got a bunch of guys behind you who are going through the same stuff as you, who can't play for a certain amount of games or even for the year. But um, it, it's, it's still fun having a group of guys who, who don't play, but still are a big part of the team and love football, love being around you. It, it's just fun having this, some of your best friends out there.